Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. And uh, in today's video, I'm going to go over with you the dreaded overactive and underactive muscles. Yes, from chapter 12. And uh, what prompted this was I had a great uh, study session call with one of our, one of our students uh, in our exam prep course. And she was asking some questions. She's already gone. She's gone through all of the materials and she's, she's pretty ready to be quite honest with you. And she went through a couple of the practice exams and got stuck on a question here, question there. And uh, what really made me think about this, so I want to help you to understand a really, really important tip when it comes to dealing with this material in chapter 12, particularly overactive, underactive muscles based on the distortion uh, syndromes that postural distortion issues that um, are mentioned in chapter 12. Very important chapter, to be honest with you. And so uh, every time I see a post on the Facebook group uh, that that speaks to, you know, a question such as how do I memorize overactive, underactive muscles? Uh, how many questions are on the exam on over uh, overactive, underactive muscles? Um, it's always it kind of prompts me to reiterate and help you to understand how to deal with this material. Uh, First and foremost, please keep in mind, it's probably the one area, one of a few areas in the textbook in the seventh edition, where for the most part, you might actually be able to use some of this in the real world. And I've, I've said this to most folks, the material in here is great. It's fantastic. But generally in the real world of personal training, we don't use a whole lot of this. We simply don't have the time. And for the most part, especially if you're doing small group training, you're simply not able to do the focused attention on, on um, muscle imbalances, deficits, issues related uh, to that. But if you're going to do that, that's great. This has got everything you need from the overhead squat assessment, just as a, for instance, um, as the major, as the major dynamic uh, postural assessment test um, to you. So in that sense, it's great, but here's the tip. And here's what I want you to take from this particular video. Just let's get right into it. At the end of the day, your goal right now is one of three things. You want to do one of three things. And this is from dealing with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students. You want to either, number one, just pass the test. You don't care whether or not you use it or not in the real world. You're already training people. You're not training people. Um, you just want to pass the test so you can put the put the certificate on the wall. And if that's you, then this is really simple. OK, so that's one. There are some of you out there that for the most part, you don't you don't necessarily care so much about memorizing it to answer questions. Now, I know you want to pass the test and get your certification, but you actually want material to use, for instance, because you think that as a personal trainer, you're going to need to do overhead squat assessments and things like that, that NASM recommends, which is great as well. And then the third type of individual wants both. You want that certification. It's really important for you as well. It should be right for credibility purposes. And you want to like learn the information so you can use it because you will, you're, you're really headstrong and ready to use the OPT model, which is a great model, by the way, it really is. It's a great toolbox to have if that's what you're going to do in your training one-on-one. -on -one. For instance, I used to do a lot of, uh, when I did one-on-one -on -one training, I used to do uh, postural assessments. I used to do things like that. So whichever one of those three you are, if you're the first one, it's straight memorization. It's straight memorization. And and here's, here's how you do it. Just like any other part of this textbook, you're going to read it, read through the material, and rewrite it on blank sheet of paper, lined paper. I don't care how you do it. Read it and rewrite it over and over again. And then guess what you do? Read it and rewrite it. It's not sexy. I know it's not sexy, but it's very effective to memorize information. This way, when you hit a hit a exam question on like a practice exam, 
you'll uh, you'll know it. OK, because most of the exam questions related to overactive, underactive muscles generally speak to a, uh, a movement pattern that is occurring. And this is what happens. What is uh, what what muscle is possibly underactive because of this postural distortion that you're seeing? OK, so that's that first that first scenario. If all you care about, you want to pass. I don't care about anything. I just want to pass the test. That's fine. That's how you do it. And and if you're. You know, if you're looking through chapter 12, for instance, and I'll give you and I, by the way, I've done a more um, in-depth uh, video on this tables 12 for observational finding sheet, uh, overhead squat assessment solutions chart table 12 five. This is it. You got to memorize this table. Now, if you're someone that's trying to pass the, you know, you want to pass it, obviously, but it's not the that's not your end goal you want to pass but you really want to use it to help people you got to memorize it anyway you got to know it anyway if you really want to use this it's really important to pass it you got to memorize it and you really want to use it with folks when you're actually training people that's fantastic as well you still got to memorize it which means you still got to do what read it and rewrite it over and over till your hand just does it automatically now, again, depending on your learning style, if you're a tactile learner, yeah, I highly recommend that you actually do the movement, do it with your friends, family, people, whoever you, you want to do it with, um, and it's going to help substantially. But you've got to memorize the names of the muscles, right, first and foremost, um, and how they are involved in the particular movement or distortion patterns, issues at the particular kinetic chain checkpoints. So tables 12.5. Uh, and then you have the other movement assessment, uh, single leg squat assessment. Again, the charts you're trying to memorize in here for overactive and underactive muscles are what are known as the solutions chart. That's it. If you're looking to memorize that, which you should be, because you're going to get, depending on which exam you get, NASM runs through five of them, five of them throughout the year. Sometimes you, you know, some people will get this exam that has a lot more questions on this particular area than another test does, but guaranteed you're going to get a bunch of questions on um, OA and UA uh, material. So table 12.7, and I'm getting to how you do it, by the way, here in a second. Solution chart for the pushing. There's a pushing and a pulling assessment. Those are your tables. Now, again, there's pictures. That's great. But you got to memorize the chart and the muscles. How do you do it? Look, at the end of the day, you I, what I do is I've got colored I've got colored markers that I use and it helps. Right. But it, you're simply at the end of the day going to take that chart and joint LPHC shoulder. And what are the possible muscle imbalances overactive and underactive? And you do it over and over and over. Like I say, the student that I was talking with today, she's pretty much there, but she was she was trying to understand it in a way that would be usable in the real world. And what I wanted to what I wanted to tell you, which is what I told her. Well, wait a minute. Are you just trying to pass the exam? And the answer was, yeah, I just want to pass the exam. I don't I don't know if I'm ever going to. No, if you're just trying to pass the exam, guess what? Stop worrying about how you would possibly use this in a real world scenario. You could, and absolutely it would it would help to know this material. But if you're, again, if you're not doing one-on-one -on -one training and you don't have really the time, you're doing small group training, you've got very strict schedule as well you should, you don't have the time nor the opportunity generally as a as a trainer to uh, to spend a whole lot of um, additional time working on possible muscle imbalances, um, overactive under, you know, strengthening the underactive, stretching the overactive it doesn't mean you don't do foam rolling it doesn't mean you don't stretch people, but to do it in a very specific, precise way because of what you may find on an assessment, okay, uh, you can do it, but I'm going to tell you right now, if your goal is to simply pass this test and deal with it, memorize the charts. I'll say that again. 
memorize the charts. How do you memorize the charts? Rewrite and recite, say it out loud. Um, also, you can you can actually do the movements yourself and you can kind of look and and kind of gauge you know, the movement with respect to the muscles, the underactive, overactive muscles. Again, one of my uh, one of my all time favorite ways of doing this is to do it actually with somebody, you know, not a client, but do it with a family member or friend um, and just say, look, I need to spend a little bit of time on this. Would you just help me out? And let's go through it and then literally read it. Look at the underactive and overactive muscles, hip flexors. So I'm on, by the way, just as an example, uh, table. 1211, this is the pulling assessment solutions chart. Possible overactive muscles, hip flexors, rectus femoris, iliopsoas, TFL, tensor fascia lata, lumbar extensors. Stop. Stop. Hey, hey, Jim, would you do me a favor? Um, I want to do this. I want to do this thing called the pulling assessment. Could you help me out here? Okay. And he stands up and he does the pulling assessment. And then you, and then you can simply uh, look at his hip flexors, his, you know, the rectus femoris, right? You know, the front part of the LPHC um, and the lumbar extensors. So those are possibly overactive. Those would be possibly overactive. Well, go ahead and point to them and you're, you know, have them, Jim, have him stand there. So possible overactive muscles if the low back arches. So if he's he's doing it and you just pretend his low back is arching. Well, if his low back arches, what are the don't look at your book. Put your pen down and and cover your eyes. What's the possible muscle imbalances? Overactive muscles would be hip flexors, lumbar extensors, underactive would be the glute max hamstrings and abdominals. You can't do it once. You can't do this once. It's got to be repetitive. Learning, memorizing requires repetition. I don't care what your learning style is. Um, it's repetition. You do it over and over and over. And I guarantee you, just like I was telling the, my student today, I guarantee you it's going to be like a nightmare. You're not going to be able to forget this. But at the end of the day, in this particular area of overactive, underactive muscles, you better know that at this particular joint, on this particular assessment, if this happens, what are your possible overactive and what are your possible underactive? That's why you do it on a sheet. Just write it over and over again. If you, again, I'll just use, I'm here, table 1211. Um, at this joint, at the LPHC, this is for the pulling, pulling. Can you see that? Pulling, LPHC. At the LPHC, if, if the low back arches, low back, if. How I do this? If low back arches, I like using colors, by the way, because it it has a uh, interesting stimulatory effect um, on your on your brain. It helps you memorize it better. If low back arches, possible overactive and underactive. I'm going to tell you right now that it's a really, really good idea to write these, the names of these muscles out, say them out loud, get very, oh, sorry. LPHC, if low back arches, overactive, underactive, write those muscles, write the names of those muscles out. You know, I wish there was an easier way to do this. I really do, but there's not, not that I have found. And please, if you have found an easier way to do this or a, um, a better way technologically, then please let, let me know. But over the years, what I found is that the physicality of writing things, slowing it down and repetition, the human brain hasn't changed at all um, in the past five years, as at least mine hasn't, um, other than getting slower. But nothing's changed. The same way that your brain absorbs and deals with and engages information, 
um, requires repetition. Repetition. Hip flexors, lumbar extensors, hip flexors, lumbar extensors, overactive. Hip flexors, lumbar extensors. By the way, if you're listening to this video, you're watching this, that's like five or six times I've said it. If you say it over and over and over and over and do that multiple times, for instance, during a day and do it every day over the next couple of weeks, that's why people can pass this exam literally in 30 days is because they put the efficiency and the effectiveness of this type of studying uh, strategy in place. And then you can't, you can't forget it. It's like, it's, a, it's like a nightmare. So uh, there's your basic assessment. You just got to memorize the names of these muscles and then piece them together into the, into the category of either overactive or underactive. Just keep in mind the whole point of doing these assessments uh, is, is not to make a person do the squat correctly or pulling or pushing assessment correctly. You're using it as a way to determine if particular uh, muscles of the body have a higher than normal or lower than normal neural drive. That's all it is. If a muscle has a increased relative relative to its antagonist, neural drive, meaning it's getting more electrical activity, neural stimulus with respect to its opposing muscle, it's overactive. Okay, that could be a problem. Maybe it's not a problem, but if it is a problem, you're going to see it. It's the only reason we do it. It's the only reason you do this ex uh, these assessments. Um, because then, technically, if you know a muscle is uh, uh, getting too, too high of a neurological a stimulus relative to its antagonist, then you can do what? You can full roam that puppy. You can stretch it. You can massage it. You can relax it. In the real world, I'm not massaging my clients. And for the most part, I'm not foam rolling my clients either. They can do that. They can do that. I'll teach them how to do it. But they're doing that after their warm up when they come in. Do you want to pass the test? Okay. In order to pass the test, you've got to memorize this information. And then you got to do those practice exams. So you know the type of questions and how they are worded. Uh, please. Leave your comments, leave your comments below if I can help you with any other specific areas in this textbook. Because again, there are some areas like assessments, okay, overactive, underactive muscles that require a lot more time on your part um, to really understand before you sit for this exam. It's not an easy exam, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, and we would love for you to be just well prepared. And that's why we're here to help you out with this. So as always, I, um, I really enjoy coming and doing these videos uh, for you folks. If you've got any other questions, like I say, leave it in the comment section below. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Share this information. If you know folks that want to be a trainer or they don't care, they don't want to be a trainer, they don't care one way or the other, but it might actually, I don't know, may actually help them in their own training, uh, please go ahead and share share this uh, video with them. And of course, notification bell lets you know when uh, when all the new material is coming out. So as always, have a great weekend and we will see you next week. Thanks.